Let's start. You're welcome, Good everybody. Evening. Good evening. I'm Gail. I'm the director of the Central Kansas Library System, and I'm going to steer the ship tonight, but I'd like my colleagues to introduce themselves, please. Good evening. I'm Patty here. Collins. I'm one of your consultants here at the Central Kansas Library System. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Duclo. I'm another consultant here at the Central Kansas Library System. I'm Lacey Steffen, and I'm the office assistant here. I'm Michael Adamic, and I work with the catalog and other tech things for the library system. When your librarians talk about Pathfinder, Michael's the guy. Michael's the guy. Tonight, we're going to talk about elements of a, a good library director's report. Um, so if Liz will go ahead and start us up there. Here we go. Let's see. I like this to be a little smaller. There we go. Okay, good. Um, a library board has to make a lot of decisions and often you depend on your library director to give you the information you need to make those decisions. So what we're gonna talk about tonight is what you need to know to make those decisions. So go ahead, Liz, next slide. CKLS is an odd animal. Um, we are kind of hanging off here on the side, but the library director and the board, the path of communication goes both ways. Got, Google is doing something dumb, but okay. looks like it's okay. Um, the director talks to the board, the board talks to the director. CKLS works for or works with the director and the library board at the same time. If ever your library were to have a situation where the director and the board were not um, getting along well, or it seemed to be talking in cross purposes, CKLS can come in and help with that. I'm sorry, I'll be set in just a minute. Things were just getting a little weird here for me. Okay, that might be better. There we go. CKLS can come in and help with that. And usually I will work with the board and one of the other consultants will work with the director. And um, that way we can get everybody on the right path and things will be going well again. But we don't, yeah, that's good. So as board members, if you holler out, Liz will type in, but what do you need to know? First off, what do you do as a board member? And you can just unmute yourself or you can type into the chat. Go ahead, Marilyn. Well, one thing, uh, I'm fairly new to my board. And um, so far I've helped with their various activities and we are considering adding maybe some other activities. So helping with activities. Mm -hmm. And um, coming up with ideas to um, do more activities. Yeah, good. Did you start this year? Mm, maybe this time last year. Okay, good. Yep, you're still new. You're still new. Anybody else? What kinds of things do you do as a board member? Well, um, I... Go ahead, Joni. Um... You know, I feel like we are there to to vote on on different aspects. Um, I, you know, even though I've been there two years now, I still feel green around the gills. Um, I still feel like I have a lot to learn, mm -hmm. but these these have definitely helped me. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, I really feel like I've learned a lot already. And so I hope to continue to grow as a board member. Um, you know, I have helped with some of the activities at the, or been involved in some of the activities in the library too. Um, I would like to do more. Great, great. Patty writes in voting the library's interest at CKLS board meetings. That is something a lot of board members do. 
some boards have their librarian do that. And sometimes the, um, the a board member does it. What other kinds of things? What do y'all do in June? What's the dreaded thing you do in June? New, new board members. New board members. New board members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what has to do with money that you have to deal with in June? The budget. budget. Yes, mm -hmm. Joni. Mm -hmm. Budget. Yep. How about policies? Have it, has anybody had to make any policies yet? We not, that, not that I remember. Good. Review policies in the last year. I can't think of any that we've changed. But, you but you've reviewed them. them. And that, that's good. That means it's a good quality policy. Yeah. Uh, but every three years, those policies should be looked at and doing them in chunks makes it a lot easier because there's like 15 that you need to have. <laughs> at least, right? So what kinds of things do you need to know? What kinds of things are you getting from your from your librarian now? And is that is that information that you need? Well, I feel like Mary Beth has um done a good job of interacting with the city as far as I mean I think about my experience as an elementary librarian my experience is so so completely different than what a, a pub a, you know mm -hmm. city librarian has to do I mean you guys brought up things last night that I just thought oh my <laughs> gosh that is a lot it is um you know, I felt like all I had to do as a elementary librarian was order books, teach lessons, and be a salesperson for, you know, children. You know, I mean, I really did feel like a salesperson in the library yeah. because I um, tried to encourage kids on, you know, different things to read. And, and I loved that part of it. But, yeah. oh, my gosh, a public librarian has so much more to worry about than what I did. It's that magic word public. Um, yes. Do you need to know about money? How much your library has, how much has been spent? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, working with the city, yes. Is it helpful for you to know um, what programs the library is having and how many people are attending? Yes. Yes. And is it helpful for you to know um, how many books got added? Yes. Good. Very good. It's I like think we've got enough. Stuff to put in one report, Gail. I know. I know. Oh, one that I didn't even think about is it because Joni reminded me because of last night, if there's an incident at the library and they had to call law enforcement, is it helpful for the board to know about that? I think we should. You should, no, yes. I think so too. Well, Liz, I, you didn't even need to make it pretty, but look at you go. <laughs> Thank you. If I was a library director, I would want to know if someone had um, made a complaint about an item in my library. Yes. Yep. And um, if there were laws that changed things, like the stupid revenue neutral rate law that kind of changes how we look at budget. I think that would be important to know too. 
and I can call it stupid and this is recorded and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it is stupid. <laughs> yes. Good. It is. Okay. <laughs> Liz, you're a stinker. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you so much for doing that for me. You've got a lot of good information here. So your role as a library trustee is multifaceted. There's a lot of different things you have to do. And it's highly possible that if you were recruited for the job, you were told you just need to show up for a meeting once a month and vote. Exactly. <laughs> that's not really what you're doing. This um, has been way more than I expected. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and the better your library gets, the more facets are added to you as a direct as a director, but also especially you all as trustees. Um, in fancy terms, you're improving and sustaining library service in your community. So Maryland's board was talking about adding new programming. That's improving library service in your community. Somebody probably had a great idea or saw that another library was doing it and said, well, why don't we try that? Sure, that's exactly what you do. You think of ways to improve your community or holes that might be in your community where you as a library could step in and fill that hole. Um, libraries are way more than just books now, that's for sure. As trustees, you must exercise good stewardship on your funds and your resources. The board is ultimately responsible for the library finances. Now, the library director spends the money, and most of the ones I know are very good at that. But it's your job to make sure that they don't spend too much when they ought not to, or they don't overspend in one area. Um, your book budget, if we look at your library budget, the budget for books may say, okay, we have $3,000 for the year. It's important that the board let the librarian know we don't get all that money in January. That that we get some of it in March and we get some of it in August and we might get some at the end of the year. So that $3,000, you don't spend it all in the first four months. You need to gradually roll it out over the course of a year. Um, developing important services is one of your greater roles, I think. The librarian is just one person. Um, board members are out in the community and the librarian is just in the library. So if the board member, it belongs to um, a service organization or a church group, or they're just having friends over for lunch, you're far more likely to hear about what's going on in your community than the librarian is. And so you're poised to bring information from the community to your board meetings and say, here's what's going on over here. What can we do? A good board, and we'll talk about this next year. We've already decided crafting a good board, but a good board is able to look at all the interests of the community and decide where are we gonna focus? And we call that strategic planning, but don't let those words scare you. Um, trustees also support foundational beliefs of librarianship. And what that means is that everybody is allowed to check out books. Um, we don't determine what's right for you or for your children. That's your job. We determine what's right for our own children. We don't judge you based on what you want to read or watch. Um, and we believe in um, confidentiality for patrons, patron privacy. They have an expectation for us to maintain, and that is that we don't talk about what they're checking out with other people. We don't really even talk with them about it unless they ask us or invite us into a conversation because that's for them. That's their privacy, and they, they have the right to that. Believe it or not, library trustees blaze new paths into the future. Um, you help determine exciting new things in your community. 
So a few years ago, when I was the director of the Great Bend Public Library, I saw that there was this amazing program going on somewhere. And I brought the idea back to my librarians and they kind of got excited about it. And then they were like, no, that would never work here. And so we talked about it some more. Well, it's trivia night and it's not at the library. It was at a pub. Well, it's at a brew pub downtown and the librarians took it and they ran with it. And they have trivia night based on all different kinds of themes. And it is incredibly popular and very well attended. Um, and it starts in 10 minutes. Yeah, I know. And we're missing it. <laughs> <laughs> I know we could do really well, but I'd fall asleep. So that wouldn't help. Um, it is. It's very popular. And that's something that um, when I ran it past the board the first time, they needed time to think about it because it wasn't in the library. It was at a bar and it had the library name on it at a bar. And so they had to really think is this the best image for our, our library and our community? But what the board then realized is that there were a bunch of people there that we normally didn't see and we were reaching out to them and they were talking about the library with their friends. And so it was really great for us. Um, that's what I mean when I say li library trustees blaze new paths into the future. With discernment, you make good decisions for the library that's going to move forward in your community. Next slide, please, Liz. I don't think we would have the three or four new board members um, that we have that are young if it hadn't have been for that night. Wow. We'll We've have got, to remember that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it. that's one of the gals told me that's why she applied to be on the board was because of the trivia night. Wow, that's a huge testimonial. Yes. So the library director does a lot of same things. They improve and sustain library service in the community. They also have to be a good steward of funds and resources, and they develop important services. They seek out and ask about and value all different aspects of the community. And they also support foundational beliefs of librarianship, like the right to read, freedom to read, freedom to view, um, patron confidentiality, um, fighting censorship. They also blaze new paths into the future. So there's a lot of um, interaction here. You're both doing the same thing, but you're coming at it from different angles. And you're also bringing different experiences to that. Um, role, which is really important. Go back a minute, Liz. What librarians also do is they work with library staff and they report to the library board. Okay. And if you have any questions, you jump right in. Go ahead, Liz. Next slide. So when a librarian reports to the board, it's because the board needs support and guidance. Boards need training too. Um, and the librarian can guide the board towards the best edu continuing education for them. Um, they need training and ongoing education. Some people come to the board, raise, I'm raising my hand, come to the board without a real sound knowledge of Robert's rules of order. Um, or even how to how to take minutes or to prepare an agenda, or how to read the budget. Um, boards do need statistics. You need to know what's your door count, how many people are coming in, how many people are using computers, how many books are checking out, how many people are attending the library programs on site and off site. Um, computer use is an important one to be watching now. One of the things that we've been noticing as consultants is that the actual physical computers are not being used as much. It used to be that there would be waiting lists to get onto the computers and we couldn't put enough of them in the library. When I go into libraries these days, the computers are almost standing empty, but people are all huddled around the spots where there are um, electrical outlets so they can charge their devices. 
or at night, they're all parked outside the library on the street using the library Wi-Fi. When Wi-Fi or, was, or coming in to print from their mobile devices. Yes. When Wi-Fi first became available, people were worried about pe about other people stealing it. Well, now that's one of our best 24-7 services is just to have that Wi-Fi extend out into the street and library patrons use it. These are people who wouldn't be able to have Wi-Fi or wireless or internet at home. And because people are using their devices more, they're coming into libraries and asking, can I print this from my phone? There are a lot of different opportunities available for that that don't necessarily involve um, purchasing software, especially if you're in a smaller community, there are ways to make that happen. And CKLS, our Andy is the person to have your librarian talk to if that's something as a board member you'd like to see. Um, libraries need statistics, but they also need stories. They need the stories about how a program impacted and changed someone's life. Um, a library I know of a number of years ago had a series of life skills classes for teens and preteens, changing tires, um, cooking dinners, and things like that. And um, I never heard any of the stories that went with that, but I imagine that some of them mm -hmm would be that they had learned how to cook their own dinner and they didn't have to wait until eight or nine o'clock until mom got home. And they could cook dinner for everybody, even if it was just um, eggs and bacon or whatever it was that they learned how to cook. I think that impacts the quality of a family's life and library programs can do that. Boards need to understand library finances. If you don't know now, ask, where does our money come from? And when do we get it? You usually have four ways that money comes to your library. You have your local tax dollars. Your county levies them, gives them to your city, and your city gives them to the library. You have money from the State Library of Kansas. And if you haven't heard yet, that is going up significantly. Small libraries were getting under $100. The base starting point now is a thousand. That is a huge increase. Um, we're gonna fight to make it even higher than that. So you get money, local, local tax dollars, you get money from the state, you get fines and donations, maybe memorials. And then the fourth source of funding is from CKLS. It's a good thing for you to know how much you're gonna get from CKLS and when you get it. The reason you wanna know about that is because if certain things aren't being done in the library and we call them standards, there are seven of them. If the standards aren't met, the amount of money you get from CKLS is reduced. We don't like that because we want you to get all the money you can. It's really earn all the money you can. And boards need to understand library law. Okay, I've been in Kansas libraries for over 16 years and I still don't know all the laws, I just know where to go. So for as board members, if you have questions about library law, you come to CKLS or to your librarian and we'll find out the answers for you. And boards need time to make decisions. One of the things that I frequently say is that boards on the big things need three meetings to make a decision. The first meeting, the topic is introduced to them. They may ask some questions, but they're still they have, they need time to think on this. The next meeting, it's introduced for a second time, and the board members are ready and they ask questions about it. But what if one board member asks a deeper question or brings up an aspect that you hadn't thought about? And so the third meeting is when I recommend that big decisions be made. Not the first, not the second, but the third. Now we know sometimes. The calendar is not our friend and we have to do things faster than in three meetings. And I'm not talking about um, who's making what for the bake sale. I'm talking about, about big expenditures or library policies. You need time to make decisions. 
Thank you. Liz? There we go. The director's report will include information for you about the past, present, the immediate future, and the big picture. Yes, you need to know what happened last month. That's where your statistics come in. How many people walked in the door? How much money we spent? What did we have for programs and who attended? How many books did we buy? Your director can give you that information on paper. And if you get it before the board meeting, you can read it over. And then you don't really have to go over it in the meeting unless you have questions. The present, it's what's happening now, what's going on in our library right now that people need to know about. We've got a program on Friday. We're excited about it. Tell everybody you know what's going on right now. What about our immediate future? Well, we're going to have to do our summer library program evaluation report. There are some strategic planning meetings we need to go to um, and we need to double check and make sure that we're going to get all of our budget. Um, we don't want to make sure we spend all of our money this year, but we need three months worth of money to carry over into next year so we have enough to operate in January, February, and March. But I think one of the best things that boards need is the big picture view. You need to be able to look and see what happened last year. What happened in 2020 that might make our statistics weird? Um, and what happened this year? How does last month compare to two or three or four years ago? When the pandemic hit, I told libraries, okay, next year, this is year zero. We are starting from scratch all over again, <laughs> building up our programming base, getting people into the libraries, making people feel safe again. And we have seen library program attendance gradually increase since 2021. An interesting thing that we're seeing actually is that um, people are checking out more books, but there are less visits to the library. It's just a statistic that I see when I look at things. I keep my eyes on things like that and ask questions. And I think you should as well. Go ahead, Liz. So what kinds of things should be included? Definitely your circulation statistics. It's nice to know that your materials are being used, but you also need to be able to look and see what part of your collection is being used most and what part of your collection isn't being used. So, most libraries say, okay, we're going to spend 80% of our budget on adult materials and 20% on children's. It's just a random number. I don't know why people do it that way, but they do. But what if 80% of your circulation is children's materials and only 20% is adult materials? You need to switch that budget. And that's something that a librarian might not see, but a board member could. And you could say, I see that we're circulating more children's books and I think we need to put more budget money into children's and take that away from adults, if that's the instance. Um, circulation statistic also, you should be getting the circulation statistics for Sunflower E-Library which is um, digital books that uh, CKLS purchases and your library has access to, watch those statistics. If nothing's going on there, ask your librarian, is she telling patrons about this great service? Or um, have you noticed that the circulation for digital books is increasing month after month, but the circulation for print books is going down? That's time again to have a conversation about shifting that budget. Maybe it's time to start buying those digital materials and buying less print materials. Keep your eye on it. You can make an adjustment mid-year. It's important. So there I am. I'm gonna explain why that's necessary. 
The number of items added or removed to the collection is important to know because it needs to be reported on every year for annual statistics. What you don't need is a list of all the books that were added by title. You can easily walk over to the new bookshelf and see that for yourself, um, but that doesn't need to be in your board report. Um, you need to know where you are in the budget cycle and you should be getting financials every month. And that way you know, how are we doing? Are we spending the right amount of money for where we are in the year? It looks like we've had to spend more money on building repairs this year. We better stop spending in these other areas just to make sure we can get to the end of the year. Those are things the board can help with. The board needs to know if any communications have been received. The board needs the visits to the library and the door count. The reason is because that's a statistic that has to be reported at the end of the year programs offered and attended. I think more than just numbers is what the programs are, what you've tried that's new, or any changes to existing programs. So if you've always had story time Tuesday morning, but only two kids are showing up anymore, um, and so maybe they're gonna try it Tuesday afternoon. Maybe your library staff is gonna try it Tuesday afternoon. Well, that was a stinker. Nobody worked then. So encourage them to keep trying different times during the week, different days, and they're going to land on something that's going to work. But it can also be not just when they're holding the program, but who's offering it. Um, if you've got multiple staff, maybe the person who's offering it isn't the right person for the job. Maybe they've lost their enthusiasm for it and it's time for them to take a break and it's time for somebody else to do it for them. I think the board should know about community partnerships that are developed. Um, those often can be sources of funding or marketing and computer use because there, I don't think we need to buy as many computers as we used to, which is good for the budget. Liz, next slide, please. We have our door count. We need to know how many people are using our website and or our social media. Um, your librarian can easily retrieve that and report that monthly. Um, you should be seeing some traffic on social media. And if you're putting the right kinds of things on your website, you'll see traffic on your website as well. You can use your website to lead people to um, digital content to, um, you can use your social media, especially if you're in a small town, um, to uh, market all kinds of things. Just let everybody know what's going on in town. The, the best library that I know of that does this is the Otis Library. They've become the community information hub. Amy can post on her social media what the when they're running mud runs for the school buses before the school board or before the school can post them. People know, they go look at the Otis Library. They know when the pizza truck comes to town, when food commodities are delivered, um, when it's a trash pickup day, they know everything that's going on in Otis and they learn it at the library. Um, you need to know uh, who has it not really necessarily who, but are the standards being met for continuing education? There is a standard for the board. A quorum of the board needs to attend continuing education every year. Doesn't have to be the same thing, and it doesn't have to be from CKLS, but it has to be a quorum of the board. And for everyone here tonight, that's five. If that doesn't happen, 10% is deducted from the base grant, and that's a lot of money. Um, the staff, and maybe you just have one staff, the staff have a requirement of six CE events a year, and that's just six. It doesn't matter if you have one staff or 30, it's just six. Um, those can be from CKLS, and they again can be elsewhere. We believe 
And this is why we give libraries money for continuing education, but we believe that a well-trained board leads to better library service in the community. And we know that well-trained library staff improve the library in the community. So you wanna keep your eye on those standards. Where are we in the standards? Have we weeded our 3% yet? Are we posting every month on our website or on social media? Um, are there any HR updates? Um, were there any disciplinary issues? Where are we in the evaluation process? Was it necessary to terminate anyone? Did we hire anyone new? If you have one librarian, the board is responsible for doing an annual evaluation for that librarian. We have a number of ways and tools that you can use for that. Um, if you're not happy with the tool you use, you get in touch with us and we'll give you a couple of different options. And you need to know about any facility issues as well. Okay, thanks Liz. Now, what we don't want to see in a library report is too many statistics. Um, we don't want to see a huge block of text. We don't want the director to hand out the director's report at the meeting. The board needs to get that information a week before the meeting starts. We don't want the director to hide information or hoard information nor do we want you all to drown in the details. Liz, can you show us the samples? We're gonna go on a field trip. We have some samples of library reports from the director. While we're on our field trip, Gail, I would like to give an example of a couple of stories that might um, yeah. give uh, trustees some ideas. So um, each year, one of the expectations of the summer library program uh, end of year evaluation is to provide a couple of testimonials, which are mm -hmm. the stories they get from their patrons. And so an example from of something that I might get from a a family might be my seven-year-old um, hated to read, but she came to the library and found and the librarian found books of topics that she wanted to read for the first time ever. So that's an example of a story. I have a personal one that I bet Gail hasn't even ever heard. I went to a um, finance class. It was a series of of workshops that we offered at the last library I worked at, and. What the instructor did, she was a she was a financial planner, and she wanted to teach um, simple budgeting and how to manage and improve your credit. And so it was some tips I learned from her that got a girl that was heavy in credit card debt. Those tips I applied in my day to day life. And they got me out of credit card debt about the time I arrived here. It took me three years, but her voice was always in my head. And it. so that's an example of how a library program can truly change a life. Because truly by the time I life. got here, I could buy a home. Right. Truly change a life. Yeah. Yeah. The stories are what give you goosebumps. The statistics and numbers are great to see, but it's the stories that give you goosebumps. Liz, can you increase the font or um, make it bigger for us? It's 100% now, there we go. Okay, so we've got a number of samples for you. These are also um, in Word documents. And so if you want, you can print them out and pick and choose what parts you like from each one and have your library and get in touch with us. And then um, they don't have to start from scratch with the format. So this is something that um, a library reported. On May 9th, they met with so-and-so to discuss the Makerspace project. They gave him a tour of the building. He's gonna work up a proposal and present it. Um, the blinds have been put up in the meeting rooms. The new meeting room sign is there. However, it's marred and they're gonna try to get a new one. 
So-and-so is going to be their contractor to take care of the library elevators. The internet switch from company A to B is completed. Um, the library has two new employees in youth services and reference. It looks like there was some switching around. Someone is going to retire, and so we're going to look to replace her. This sample is clear and concise. The director mentions all the changes that happened in the last month, facilities, projects, personnel changes. Um, it would be nice to see some community stories and some statistics, but it really isn't necessary all the time. Okay, let's go down to the next one. Sample two, so-and-so. Now this one I like because it has headings. Library staff, so-and-so's last day was this day. Who's it will start the next day? Um, progress on the statue. That's interesting. They're having a statue. Um, there's an event going to go on with the uh, dedication of the statue. Hi, good girl. Property insurance. That's something a board definitely needs to know about. Um, some information about working on uh, some railing around an air conditioner. That's a good one to know. Ah. Wi-Fi after hours. Um, they had someone report that the um, there were some kids in sleeping bags at the library. Not I not in the library at the library. So I'd say I bet probably out on the sidewalk in sleeping bags at three a.m. In summer, they're always debating whether to turn the Wi-Fi off after hours. Now here they think that they're at that point and that's what they want to do because. They're tying damage with the air conditioner and the Wi-Fi being on after, after hours. I think that there's not enough information here to make the decision that the Wi-Fi gets turned off. I think this is something that needs to take several more months and a lot of questions need to be asked. This is very important. There was missing money, um, but we have purchased a small lock safe and this is, here was the problem. And here's the solution that we've looked at. If a board member sees this, they want to ask again in a couple of months, so where are we at with the missing money? Is money still going missing or has it this, this solution solved the problem? City appropriation is another word or another way to say this is the money you get from the city. Here you go. Um, but this one said, uh, after I paid the bills today, we were in the red. Last year, our second reimbursement came, our second disbursement came in July. Um, there's some problems here. Their bills are coming due when they don't have money. Um, that's why I say it's important to know when does the money come in because it may be that they spent a lot of money on supplies when they needed to hold that money back until the next disbursement was made. Um, here they report that the uh, budget was published in the paper. A lot of us don't have papers anymore that are regular, but um, that's an easy phone call to the city clerk to find out how much money we'll get next year, okay? This one has a toilet problem. They had to call a plumber. I have a dog head in my lap. She's being sweet but she, what she really wants is to go outside. Um, somebody's interested in volunteering. Um, here's a separate children's report with the summer library program numbers. Um, they've had their best year to date and the best records to date. Scroll down, Liz. Program attendance was great. There she's giving the program attendance for every single one. Number of books checked out, it's great. They're planning for the future. They've got a Christmas craft day coming up and they're planning now. It's still just August, but they're planning. Okay. So this is the same information. The statistics are there, but it tells more of a story. Um, it would take longer for a board to read. And that's why you need it a week before the meeting. You need to have time to read it. This might be... Um, what the librarian gives you, 
before the meeting, the week before, and then they may still have a little bit of a verbal report as well. Okay. Now, this one is pretty cut and dry. Um, these are our statistics. Here's how many hours we were open. Here's how many things checked out. Notice they're telling you their VCR tapes. Do you think they're really still checking out VCR tapes? Or she just hasn't updated her report yet. Um, no Wii games were checked out. This is nice where on this report, it would be really nice to see the last three months worth of statistics or even the last six months. Because if no Wii games are checking out anymore, is it because nobody knows about it or because it's outdated technology? Um, the number of books they borrowed and the number of magazines you received, those were donations. There is a little bit of a story about Summer Library Program. Um, Tech Day is in August, and we need to update board members' information. This is very brief. It's fine. But where are those good stories? They're not here. This is, again, cut and dry. It's a bulleted format. Um, it's a lot of facts. Here you go. Boom, 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 boom. Now, what do you see here? You see a list of the titles. And it goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Absolutely not necessary. Much better for you just to know how many things were added or... How many adults and how many children, how many movies? You don't need to know all of the titles. Some when I board... see that list, I see what else could the librarian have been doing instead of making Typing that, that up. Right, right. Sometimes board members like to know the new things that are in the library so they can check them out. This might lead a board member to believe that they are privileged and should get a written list, but board members should follow the same rules as anybody else, and nobody else gets a list of all the titles delivered to them. The board members can walk over to the new bookshelf and see as well. This is detailed. Um, it's a little bit too much. This one I like. Top initiatives, that's great because it's what's going on and what the director thinks is um, top priorities for the board to know. So here, the staff manual update project and the quarantine paid time off policy. Um, yeah, good stuff. That one allows the board members to ask questions about which things are most intriguing and 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 yeah there might be some more stories there but it gives them something to go okay so tell me about this the annual financial update documents show me mm -hmm. those you know or or uh the, tell me the status of the future drive through window which wall were we going to put that on again and did we run by that that by the city inspector first um yeah it, it lets board members ask a lot of questions the program service and highlights gives you a little bit of a narrative to let you know what that connecting readers with books is about. So I like this one because it's good, but it also is, um, it lets you know what's going on. There still aren't any community stories because that can be difficult for a director to start thinking, we need to get that in here. We need to get that in here. This is an interesting thing where they're gonna be providing personalized reading recommendations for adults. As a board member, I'd be watching that. And if that was successful, I'd say, why aren't we doing that for kids now too? Well, look at here, they are. So you can see that there's no one right way to do a board report. Yep, keep scrolling. Um, but the information you can get is different if you're not getting the information you need, um, ask your director to provide it. Now, here is a little bit of community feedback, but um, 
we enjoyed cooking with the group. Um, I locked my keys in the car. Uh, so here, trivia is great. You, you should have your own podcast. That's sort of like cheerleading for the library staff. Um, it's not that the better story would have been um, my husband and I are on a limited budget and trivia night is our date night. And we have such fun. It really makes a difference for us. That's a little bit of a better story. And they just keep going on this one. So probably overkill. And I see I see this happening um, with with many of our libraries where they're taking every comment on Facebook and yes. dumping it into the director's report. Yes. And again, just like that list of books, I see um, who's not being served or um, where could we put the staff attention? And so, yeah, three or four are fine, but I don't need 30. Yeah, exactly. And as a board member, I would say that mm -hmm. because in my mind, this is being disrespectful of a board member's time. Um, board members are volunteers and their time is very valuable. I would pick out the top four. And the, they should would be, be the ones that impact lives. Go right, ahead. And they should be different. They shouldn't just be, oh, we think Gail is great. Or the children's librarian is very fun. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. In one of those, there was a complaint. And so I think that would be important to show as well. But then there's a response from like a community medical medical worker about ah. how well the impact that they've had for um, mm -hmm. their COVID response, where another one was like very angry about the COVID response. So it's- Oh, sure. Yeah. Give and take. Right. Okay. But that's the last one. Thank you, Liz. So when you are ready to learn more about this, you'll be able to, um, there is a recording that you can watch and or send your librarian off to watch because it was created for librarians. We ha will have copies of sample agendas and sample director's reports on our LibGuides. And that is our um, trustee training resources webpage. It is loaded with great information. Patty, are you going to pop the link in there? Good. Um, there is probably every single thing you're going to need to know as a trustee on that page. Probably. Yeah. Um, lots of good information for you. If you have questions that your director is not able to answer, you are absolutely encouraged to call us. Um, we remember the circle. We work for uh, board members and librarians. We're finishing a little early tonight. That's awesome. Thank you for attending. Um, you need to make sure to fill out the CE verification form or have your librarian do it. And that way then you get credit for this. You've just earned money for your library. There it is. Great, great. Giving you a lot to think about. I saw questions people taking notes. Have. What? Are there any questions you all have? Yeah. Did we talk about anything that you're going to have your librarian start doing? Maybe. <laughs> sure. Well, and, and now you know, you know which information you're not getting, but now you know why. And so it's not, you're not just asking the librarian for busy work. And the more of that information that you have in a packet prior to the meeting, the more efficient your meeting runs. And then one of the things that we talked about um, 
on Tuesday evening, we talked about um, the board basics is, you know, the job of the board um, beyond policies and hiring a director and man make, making sure that you can financially um, keep the library running is future planning. And if you're spending the whole hour that a lot of boards spend on the stuff that's in the packet that you could have all had the opportunity to read and you are now spending time reading that instead of moving forward, you don't have time for future planning. And so um, speaking of future planning, um, Gail mentioned at the beginning that um, CKLS is time for, it's time for CKLS to do their future planning. Um, strategic planning conversations will happen next month. I've put the, um, the locations and the dates in the chat um, Smith Center, Scandia, Minneapolis, and Russell. Those will begin at 5 p.m. We will uh, feed you a great meal, um, but this isn't a dinner and a show. This is dinner and participation from all of you. So um, we'd like you to consider the things that your library needs, um, what needs you have for the next five years, and also the things that you think um, CKLS could be doing to help you meet those needs because we hope to hear your voices or the voices of other um, members of your library board or your librarian at one of these evening activities. So um, um, a couple other things that are on the schedule. Um, we have a programming workshop that will focus on teens and adults in Stockton on August 13th. And then um, next week we have a library directors meeting on Friday. And uh, and then on the 20th of, of August is one of my favorite presentations that CKLS does. And it's the opportunity to hear what's on our librarians' minds. Librarians and trustees can join us for supper for something called Explore the Questions That Matter. And this is the time that we step back and we let you ask the questions that are on your minds. And those are wel uh, welcome. Um, any staff member or library trustee is welcome to join us for those. So. Yes. pizza and dessert and a whole lot of lively conversation <laughs> thanks for attending tonight we appreciate your time and we very much appreciate the work you do for your community and remember if you have any questions you can always reach out to us through email give us a call stuff like that thank you for coming i'm gonna thank stop you. the recording thank you.